He should be. Has he got a red bit? It's red. Um, Hello and welcome to another Smashing Pistons video and today we're talking to Mark Parr of Mark on Motoring Hi Simon with his fantastic yellow McGann that isn't here obviously yeah. Hello Hi. That's quite a big stick you've got there Mark Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> I've also got to carry this gimbal around as well Is it heavy? It's quite weighty, yeah Oh, it's well balanced there It's only got a little camera on it as well but it's, uh, <laughs> it's still uh, just walking from the car park I'm already feeling strange <laughs> Getting the muscles built up Yeah uh, so One of the things you said to me on my Hang on a minute. One of the things he said to me on the way in, so you can actually hear Mark, um, was this its first time you've been to a restoration show? That's right, I've done the um, the November show. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The classic uh, Lancaster Insurance oh, yeah, that's classic it. motor show. Done that one a few times. I, I weren't so sure about this one, it was a bit of a last minute thing. Um, so I've headed down this morning for the Sunday. Um, so naturally everyone else's videos are already out. Yeah, that's, I thought that. <laughs> this morning when I was looking through YouTube, I was like, well, that's pretty much everybody that I know has already released the video. Yeah. But sorry, I'm going to do one anyway, because it's my birthday, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think so far? I mean, I know you've only walked from literally over there to over here. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, as I expected, it does look very similar to the November show. Yeah. Um, obviously, I am expecting I will see. I think there, there was someone when we came in entrance uh, that were doing a bit of tinkering on, on the vehicle. So it'll be interesting to see what you can do as yeah. we were saying earlier some of the jobs that you might want to do like my car could do with some body work yeah yeah, but yeah you can't really come and spray a car in the middle of a hall full of no gleaming cars can you no maybe they should do that though because they could set up like um, a spray booth with an extractor on it yeah maybe we should tell them that and then get your car sprayed for free <laughs> by someone <laughs> I, mean, I think could do it I've, I've been quoted about uh, I think last quote I had was £6,000 wow yeah for yeah. a car that I paid less than 500 quid for three years ago. So that's another thing, that's how, how much cars have gone up in value, because there's no way you'd get a Megane Coupe now for that. No, I mean, they're still not doing big money, in all fairness, mm. but, um, I mean, I know I've got a lot more invested in mine now than, than what the car's physically worth. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was it was never bought to flip, it was always a car that I bought because I wanted, uh, and it's a keeper, I mean... Yeah. It was assembled on my 15th birthday. All oh, right, oh, well, there you go. I've driven the car back to the factory where it was built <laughs> on the 25th anniversary of the um, announcement of the closure. Right. The factory um, closure were announced like two weeks after my car was assembled. <laughs> so I've been over, I've, I've took the car, it's been on the news there, I've met the guys who built it. All right. Um, so th there's definitely some history there and... You know, even if I was offered a car of ten times its value, you I, wouldn't I, do it. I couldn't part with it. I like I like stories like that, and mm. it's, yeah, obviously because you've got that connection to it, it yeah. means even more to you than than uh, another any other car. Well, um, maybe at some point in future you'll we'll get the opportunity you can actually have a look at the car on camera. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah go for a bit of a drive. That, yeah. That's the okay. universal symbol for drive, obviously. <laughs> So here we are. Oh, hopefully you can see near me. Um, so just just had a word with Mark. Um, it's first time Mark's been to the restorations show. He's been to the uh, to the uh, to the main uh, Lancaster Insurance show. He's not been to this one. Um, I'm here quite early, earlier than I have been before, and uh, it's quite good. There's not much. There's not much around. I'm going to walk down there see if I can find Alex and uh, I'll show you some cars while I'm walking. So it's a few of these things dotted around. Look how nice that on that um, that bonnet thingy is. Now we've got the MG Club. So it's a nice MG8 and an MG6 and a nice bronze colour. And we saw some of these racing yesterday, which was quite nice. MG, TF and F. XJS V12. ZS with its wheels off. 
and then I'll just show you through these. I w I've just said to Mark I'm going to try and avoid the uh, MG Rover stuff, but I might as well show you these because these are all the cool colours. But this one is quite, uh, quite interesting. So it's kind of got a matte grill on it, but it's got them funny streetwise wheels. I can't remember whether they're addendums or not. There's a thing, let's have a look. Oh, it's got an Alicante uh, roof light. Oh, you can't really see it. But, uh, take it from me, it looks cool. And then we've got a, a Metro, partly, partly a Metro. Looks like the, the start of uh, much, much weekends of fun. Uh, we've got some nice, cool, funky coloured buggies. That's the, that's the kind of thing that we want to see on cars these days. Look at that glitter. Collection of minis, and some Ford Pops. I want to find the Allegro snap. Have a look in there. Rob's here. Hello. Rob's here showing off his big end. Oh, yeah. Is it a dirty big end? It's very dirty there. <laughs> we'll stop filming that then. Um, so I imagine you're going to be doing a lot of MG Rover content today. Um. No, no, actually, I'm going to try and avoid all that, apart from Rob's lovely streetwise called Penny. Is this the first time you've seen Penny? No, I actually interviewed Rob uh, ah. at Photo um, oh, yeah. last year, so yeah. It's, the it's, Festival it's, of the Unacceptable that's right. slash Exceptional. <laughs> yeah. Because everything's very, well, there's a concourse section, isn't there? There is, yeah. Which yeah. <laughs> is a bit bizarre. But. Yeah, but I mean, in fairness, even the cars that don't get in concourse, there are some pretty outstanding cars. Yeah. Um, but, and it's a great event, it's nice to see the cars that, that were once everywhere that, mm. are, that now you forget you don't about see basically. anymore. Yeah, some of it, well, some of them really were quite forgettable cars, weren't they? But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're studying for another rover, we can't talk about forgettable cars. Nostalgia is a powerful thing, though, isn't it? I always yeah. say. Yeah. Um, I mean, my grandfather had rovers, he had SD3s, um, mm. it, then he went on to a couple of R8s and then an HHR, so even though I've never owned a rover myself, I'm quite nostalgic about them. I've also driven um, Boaty's Rover 45 V6. I've reviewed that car. Oh, is that um, the one that Joseph Lloyd had? Yeah, it was just before um, it was just before it left Joseph actually. Yeah, okay. um, so yeah, I've I've got I've got a bit of a connection to Rover myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you think to Penny? You know, I think that's like I said when I interviewed Rob. I think in some ways, streetwise was a bit like the R8 really ahead of the curve. Yeah. So the R8 was a small posh car before. Small posh cars yeah. were really a, a, a common thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now everyone's driving around in a premium. Yes, that's premium true. Hatchback. Yeah, like BMW One Series. Yeah, and, that sort of thing. and the streetwise again. Um, you know, this sort of rugged mm. off-roader look, but really without the off-road ability. Yeah, it's that's nearly every car on the road now. So I've never, never really been a Mercedes type person, specifically when you think about Formula One. But they do make, or well, they did make, some very pretty cars. And with those wheels, they just set it off perfectly. And this happens to be one of those special Cosworthy ones that's got uh, quite a lot of power in there. Very nice. And over here we've got, uh, oh, what's that? It's that thing that begins with W. What? So it reminds me of a scout, but it's not. And then we've got Fiat Motor Club. Oh, we should have a look at that unpolished race car, shouldn't we? Oh, Fiat Strada. I did like those when they came out. You don't, literally don't see many of them about at all now. Uh, but yeah. I assume that's an aluminium bodied special. With no engine in it, fuel tank in back. Yeah, no, people It'd be nice to have something like that for the 
the thickest of roads as I think. Strange looking, strange looking beasts and cars. We've got some Porsches. So this one will be a 924, uh, and that's a 924, and that's a 924. And we're going to have a look at the, uh, we're going to have a look at the Lotuses, or the low tie. Three midgets. Yes, here we go. It's a Nespri. Not really, not really spent much time with an Esprit before. Uh, but yeah, that's like the James Bond car. Then my dad had one of those, which I think is the Elite. There's very nice interiors in these, and that excels like a modify a, modi a more modern version. Is it an Elite and an Elite Coupe? Very nice. Uh, but these ones, uh, front engine. Uh, and then the Esprit is the, the mid-engine one, and it's mid, not rear, because the engine sits forward of the rear wheels. Uh, what else was I going to show you? Oh, there's a chassis. Here we go. So this is like the, the back of the chassis, um, which, is, which is what is underneath that. Like yeah. an off-roader that's that was before its time, basically. It was, yeah. I mean, that nearly every car on the road now is some form of SUV. It is, it's um, true. You know, it, that's perhaps haven't hasn't got the abilities to back up its its looks and yeah. such. Like. Um, and the streetwise tapped into that, but it it was. I think Rover knew it was a car that was designed for for the urban environment, yeah. designed for the school run. So you've got these plastic bumpers that, um, you know, if you, if you scuff them, you're not going to scratch any paint off. You've got yeah. those wheel arch yeah, spats yeah. and everything else. It's it's, But unfortunately, it was just a, a bit like with the R8, in a sense, I suppose. The head it was, of its time. Yeah, and, and maybe it was the wrong time. Maybe if Rover had been around a decade later yeah. and they'd have released... Um, something along the theme of the streetwise, yeah. maybe it would have been more of a success. Mm. Well, seems as as uh, Rob's pretty much de streetwise to this one now. Uh, so if you can look at its stance, I don't know whether we can see. I think is it looking a bit lower than uh, an old? Yes, it's very very much lower. Yeah, so it's had a sixty mil drop on it, um, and its engine has been tuned to be less than school car park friendly, shall we say? Oh right. Um, it does smoke a little bit when you uh, when you use your right foot. Mm. So do you still think it fits into what the narrative that you've just put out for it? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose that's the other good thing about robes and MGs is that you get people modding them and people don't frown upon it as much. Yeah, I think this whole thing around MG Rover, I mean, if you think a few years ago, I, I'm of an age where I can... All right, the, the, the prestigious rovers like the P5 were before my time. Yeah. Um, but I lived through an era where Rover were maybe on a slight decline, but again, cars like the R8 were, were quite mm. successful. Yeah. Um, and th there was an air of quality about them. There's a lot, there's a younger generation now that probably only remembered Rover, the, the, the Chinese Rovers, yeah. the, the very late, the back end of MG yeah, Rover. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, when the. Um, Project Drive came and the cost cutting, and I think it did sort of damage that reputation. Yeah. The, the MG brand obviously did um, infuse a bit of something into the brand, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because there was an affordable car and they had all the bits on that yeah. um, young drivers would have appealed to yeah. young drivers. Yeah, like um, they could see them racing around tracks and their car looks the same as the one that they could see on the track. Yeah, and I think that was the only thing that really sort of kept them going in mm. the end because unfortunately the image that Rover itself had, it, the, the only people really that were buying the Rover badge cars towards the end were probably the, the loyal Rover customers yeah. uh, who were probably getting older and downsizing anyway. Yeah, and people um, that were just retiring is what I got out. And there were so many friends of my dad's that had retired and gone and bought a Rover 75 because it was comfortable yeah. and they, really, they liked the look of it. But they wouldn't go out and buy a ZR 
the thing is, again, though, the 75 was a, a new product. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the range ended up being facelifted versions of, yeah. of cars that were already, had already been around for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even though they, they did try and bring the family face in to make everything look a bit like the 75, yeah, that's true. Uh, what they really needed was some new models and obviously cash strap rover unfortunately yeah. just weren't able to deliver on that way. Yeah. And you can see prototypes what they were looking at on my other videos plug. Mm. So thank you Mark, oh, it's been no a pleasure problem. talking to you. Yeah, likewise. And no, like, no doubt I'll follow you around NEC today, annoying you dressed up as Norman in a bit. <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to have a walk around here. I'm going to head over to Hall Fall as well. Okay. Because uh, obviously, as you know, I'm quite into my French cars, so um, I'll be going to see the guys over in the um, on the Renault stand as well. There. Uh, just as just as you pointed that out, I did like that Twinger that we we're in last year. With four, I've got motorbike carbs on it or something, weren't it? Oh yeah, that was. Um, Yes, yeah, so that was a, fa a, a Mark 1 Twingo. Mm. Uh, generally, they came with a 1.2 litre engine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all left hand drive, never sold in the UK. Yeah. That particular one has got a, I think it was the K4M engine from memory. Right. 1.6 1. 6, 16 valve, 110 horsepower. <laughs> and what someone had done is put Yamaha um, R1 <laughs> throttle bodies on it, I think, and some other modifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was putting out near 150 horsepower. See, that's what you want. You want a car that weighs nothing and has 160 horsepower. <laughs> well, one of those cars I'll be going to have a look at because I believe there's a Renault Sport Spider over there. Today. Oh, right, okay. Um, and that is a car with about 150 horsepower and, and Doesn't weigh anything. very little weight. So <laughs> um, that's something I'm looking forward to seeing that I've not seen for quite a, a number of years. Cool beans. So. I suppose one of the things we can't, uh, we can't not look at, seeing it's here, and we can actually walk around it this time, is a Cybester or Cybester or whatever it is. So let's have a quick look. So it's definitely a sports. It's definitely a sports car. Carrying the iconic MG badge. It's very, very big. It'd be interesting to see a TF parts inside of that. It's very large. Got a three door Escort. I think it'll be an XR3 on an RS2000 and a race prepared ZR, which I would rather have that uh, than that any day. It's something about a race prepared ZR that just looks meaty. TF. How about an MG Roadster that's been uh, prepped? I like the little bubbles on the headlights. They're a nice thing. Yes, these are some some uh, MG Rover-ish type things. Metro, MG Metro, MG Montego Turbo, which you don't see very often. Which I think's running on MGF wheels because the the spacing's the same for the studs. All the grey brown interior with an MGF gear knob on it. If you find one, rescue it. Uh, what have we got down here? An Allegro's? I think. Is that a, something else? A Maxi? So we've got the Maxi. Beige, something or other. And then an imp, race prep to imp. Austin Marina van, which is uh, not normally in that position, I assume. So, jobs for today that they're doing. Still fuel tank and paint, eh? paint. Welding repairs, seal along welded seams, refit, refit near side front wing, refit near side door and hinges. So they do quite a bit. So these are the sorts of things you used to say, see all over the place. And you just don't see any anymore. Just, just normal cars. 
like these things, these things have always been a sort of special thing that you don't see very often. But these things, you used to see them all over the place, but not anymore. This looks familiar, but yeah, those wheels really do go well on that. That is a nice looking, nice looking car. But then there's also this. Now, this was possibly the third car I ever drove. Um, because uh, my friend Pete had, had one before he passed his driving test so basically I used to go over to his house and then drive his car pick up Rob, drive his car uh, to Doncaster music shops um, oh, this is an automatic but one of the things I remember from it's been a manual was it the gear stick pointed backwards which, is a, which was tray weird uh, it kind of came out at an angle backwards so it was like the, the pivot point was further forward. Uh, and yeah, it did, did feel well. There was, his weren't particularly good. Um, they didn't really pull very well on motorway and stuff. But um, yeah, they were a bigger car than I was used to at the time. And then, um, yeah, it was a good experience for, for a first experience in a, in a Japanese car. Because up to then I'd only driven minis, I think. And we shall see what else we can find then. So we've seen uh, we've seen Bram Rob's BRM. Uh, but here's a chance to look at another BRM to see what's similar and what's not similar um, with with Jenny. Now that's interesting because one of those I was thinking of making my own. So maybe these bits are something that I need to copy. Um, so yeah, we've got the we've got the same wheels. We haven't got spotlights. I've just painted my covers green. Um, so on this, on the five door, they appear to be higher than those things. But that's the same same seats we've got. I should buy one of them uh, one of them BRM gear gate bits. That'd be quite cool. But yeah, as you can see, BRM's sort of got like a black interior, whereas, whereas Jenny's is a sort of grey. It's a it's a good comparison to see to see what one one that's an actual proper BRM looks like. Uh, oh, there's hundreds of them now. Well, it's three. You always you ever see just one BRM? You always see you always see a few. Um, but yeah, there's some stuff that, that they've done. They did on BRMs. That I've not done on Jenny. In fact, let me let me let me point some of it out for you. You know, very unexciting for you, but exciting for me, sort of way. So there we go. My wheels different colour. These stripes I've done the same colour as wheels, but it's a different colour. The door mirrors I've done body colour, and I've left the door handles there. The rubbing strips I've done the same colour uh, as the wheels, which is sort of like a an. Um, Technics grey, I think it's called. Uh, I've done the this bit, the mouth bit yellow. Uh, everything else is the same, I believe. Yes, but they do look nice. But I can't wait to see uh, Jenny parts inside of a BRM just to just so the differences are, are obvious. And I did say I was going to avoid filming loads of Rover stuff, but Rover coupes, how nice are they? That, that's the only R8 shape I like. Any of the other ones, I'm not fussed about. But the coupes, yeah, I like them. SD3, another thing that you used to see loads of, but uh, not anymore. Tri spokes. There's nothing that screams early 90s, late 80s more than tri spoke wheels. Uh, I bet Pete would like this. Looks like it's a proper fast one as well, not just a, a slow one. Giving uh, some bunkers a bit of a recolor. I suppose we should have a look at that DeLorean over there just because it's there. So here we are. The DeLorean. The most disappointing sports car, whatever. It like. so, didn't go very fast, didn't stop very well, weren't very comfortable. 
the only good thing about them were the chassis apparently because it was a Lotus design chassis but there we go it looks nice though doesn't it although the wheels I bet they're a pain to, to clean so it goes from big cars to what possibly the smallest car you can call a car go cars from a Land Rover to a go car I don't know if it's because of it's a, a practical classics um, show well I were close up weren't it uh, but it, um, this, there's a, it seems to be quite a lot of of uh, British type British marked cars uh, there's a bangers and cash caravan down there for some reason so I'll avoid that because it sounds noisy uh, we've got TR7s and then we've got I think is the front of a Herald oh actually that's a good thing I can show you look at the re weird rear suspension set on there it's just it's one leaf spring joining both wheels together bizarre Triumph Club uh, Urchin Spares A little five door metro That's nice Something like that would be nice That purposeful patina on it And if you want to follow them on Instagram That's what you need to look at Some bubble cars Apparently they don't come with bubbles. Well, actually, they're putting a bubble back on that one. Um, but yeah, they're kind of they're kind of cute in a way, aren't they? But I can't see any. I can't see why people have anything have them for anything other than uh, than uh, leaving them in the garage. That's nice. A Ford Pop, but obviously it's got it's got something going on. There we go. It's got a. 1.8 MX-5 engine with a turbo on it. Mm. It's quite tasty, isn't it? Especially on them wheels. Like split rims. Very nice. And this is that Tipo that looks like an old Alpha uh, when it's made out of MX-5 parts. Um, okay, if you look at the exhaust side, well, there's one over there. If you look at the exhaust, there's only part of the exhaust actually connected to anything. This gives you a better idea of what you're looking at. So that'll be where tank goes. Look at all these linkages. And there's your, there's your Mazda engine. But yeah, say, out of the eight, eight exhausts, there's only four of them actually exhaust bits, of the ones are fake ones. So that would definitely be, that would definitely be something that would be, uh, be useful to, to build. Very nice. This is something you don't see very often. A little smart coupe, but the one with the actual who is it? That bit, with that bit on it. All the ones I've seen have been uh, uh, there. That's the boot lower on there. It's very strange looking thing. I didn't see this before. So they must be the same same wheels that are on that uh, Mondeo. Well, that works well. I like that. And then we've got a uh, more Ford stuff. So we've got a Mark One in a very, very subtle colour. And then we've got a yeah, Pro, which again is something that you don't see very often anymore. And then there's three of room in one place. I suppose we better film the minis otherwise Simone will be she'll be livid that we didn't film the minis. <coughs> uh, no. uh, joking aside I, I, do, I do quite fancy getting a mini and uh, doing some sort of project with it. Not necessarily a, 
the Cooper S, just a normal Cooper. They are very nice looking things. And there's uh, obviously uh, an original traveller. They're strange. Lotus Sunbeams. You see how the engine's cantered over in them as well. That's pretty much the same as it was in that Elite, my dad's. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the angle on the, the inlet was about the same. That's like a, they're like a touring, but they're not a touring, they're like a sports coupe, a shooting brake or something they call it. That's a, that's a really nice sort of shape to have a sporty type car. Uh, and it's also quite useful, it's got a V6 in it or whatever that one is. This is one of the trendy bits. So look, tools galore. <laughs> More tools than you can shake a stick at. Unless you've got quite a big stick. There's some cars over that bit. We'll have a look over there to see. Rod around. Casties. Stickers. Terry, you don't see them very often. And uh, they're in a, a they like a CC. Similar to, I like that. Uh, we've seen them before, I think. Different who recognise the MGB. Which is a wonderful piece of kit. What else have we got? Some caravans. Martin, it's a nice amount of the Gondra engine. Escorts. Oh, we've got an aerial atom Mark II. We drove one of them. There you go, 70 grand. When I added. Uh, went in, didn't have a wing on it there. Yeah. Next five. <laughs> Blingy. So this next bit over here is like the barn finds bit. So look what we've got there. It's definitely a barn find. Ooh, Uno Turbo. Literally, you never see them anymore. They were, from uh, from memory, they were quite rapid as a day. You wouldn't think so, looking at them there. One Astra 1600S. Not Astra L. That's confusing, I don't know what's going on. Oh, that's that wooden built thing. Thing. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. So, I think Granada Scorpio step. Oh, no, it's not here. Oh, yeah, now I can see it, obviously. That's small, isn't it? I don't know what you, where you'd put that. If I came home with that, it would definitely look fit in the garden. 
says Mazda 323. Yeah, they're nice little cars. If you want to read that, you'll have to pause it and have a look. Oh, that one comes with a garden already attached to it. Mark 4, Cortina. Chrysler 180. Triumphs. Oh, climbing. What's going on there? Bet that uh, handles in a very bizarre, not very sensible way. You apply the DeLorean rule to this one. If there's one here, you've got to film it, otherwise, what's the point of it being there? Oh, but it's not even a real one. Oh, that was bizarre. So it's not it's not a real one, it's based on a Citroen. It's quite cool. One of the things about walking around places like this with a camera is one getting lost, but two, um, it's a task in itself to walk around filming stuff and not getting other people's way or walk into people. Which is quite a challenge. But, um, yes, I shall. I shall walk around a little bit more, and when I see something that particularly interests me, I'll uh, I'll record if I if you, I knew there'd be one here somewhere. Renault Five. I think this is a Gordina one. You can tell what it seats. Look at them seats. Lovely. Oh, we've got some more, some more interesting looking things over here. Tire tools, MR tools. Various years. Volkswagens. Reliance emitters. Now then, some sobs for Pete. I'll have to tell Pete. And film these for me. Here we go. That's a nice colour. That one's a bit not as nice a colour, and this one's actually one of the last ones that they did. So it's like a Saab Streetwise 93X, plastic bits all over. Um, I think this was one of the facelift ones. One's like pink, but the Tora, I think. Yeah, that's a nice looking thing. Uh, and then that's like pink's other one, I think. Oh, is that the same thing? I'm not sure now. Maybe that's the same thing. That's like the old one. But Pete's is a hard top. Now, nah, mattress are a random thing. been said before, it has, and I've just said it before, uh, that French cars have got a certain style to them, it's true, there's, there's lots of, uh, um, we're talking about Renaults and Citroëns that have got a certain, a certain flair to the design, um, yeah, maybe maybe Europeans look at the old British cars and, and think the same, so we're just walking through the uh, the bits for all the toolage and yeah. toys and stuff, so I'll, I'll turn you around so you can have a look.
So thank you for watching. Don't forget to uh, what's the word? Don't forget to clickify, subscribe here, uh, comment here, and share with your friends. And also, what's it that young Simon says? Oh, well, hello. No, uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's that that's that beard and bangs, isn't it? Well, hello there. Well, hello there. <laughs> it sounds like Noddy. It's how oh, I've got this ickle film I'm going to make. It says ickle a lot, Simon does. <laughs> but yeah, do do send it to your enemies too. Then they know That's it. They know that you really hate them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Bye. <laughs> <laughs>